Hi friends, this is Samantha Nielsen with Find Your Voice. I am so thrilled to be joined with Carol McConkey today. Welcome, Carol. Hello, good to see you, Samantha. Hello. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Now, I know that many friends and family members know who you are, especially in the Utah area and within your religious context. Tell us briefly who you are and what you've been up to these days. So um, I am first and foremost, the companion to my husband, Oscar McConkey. We have um, seven children together and we have 38 grandchildren and one great grandchild. So that is my primary identity and for which I am very grateful. Um, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I've served in multiple callings. Um, currently, my husband and I are presiding over the Utah Salt Lake Inner City Mission, which is a, a mission that reaches out and to help uh, with the welfare and well-being of those who are in need. Um, and uh, we have a multitude of volunteer service missionaries who work with us wow. to bless the lives of many men and women and children and their families. So you keep um, a very busy schedule between family, community service, religious service, and, you know, just taking care of yourself and, and your dear husband. It's a full-time job. It is a full-time job, but it's a joyful job. Yeah. And so I feel very, I feel very blessed. Yes. And that shows, that shows clearly. Well, we're so excited to have you as a keynote speaker with the Find Your Voice Conference. What a wonderful event it's going to be. It is an interfaith conference, which is a huge blessing, I think, to the women in our area, in the Salt Lake area that will be participating and joining us. Can you give us a little sneak peek about what you're going to be speaking of on Saturday, May 7th? Absolutely. I'm thrilled and honored to be invited to participate in this conference and thank all of those involved in organizing it mm -hmm. because I know it's a monumental task. Yes. Um, my topic that I was given is uh, how, how can boundaries and forgiveness coexist, which is an interesting topic because I think when people think of boundaries, they think of kind of defining a space that is um, maybe uh, limiting rather mm -hmm. than expanding. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I'd like to be able to show that boundaries uh, are actually a way of progression in positive ways, ways that help enhance our capabilities and help us to move forward with those things that are important to us. And actually, forgiveness is the same. They have very similar qualities when you think about um, the in, the intent and purpose of having boundaries and being involved and being engaged in being able, I should say, capable of forgiving others and forgiving ourselves. So you're using the concept of boundaries as kind of an empowering concept, an empowering tool. And you're right. A lot of people have an opposite position or an opposite perspective of that concept and that practice. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more, two points. Why are boundaries important? And then let's follow up by talking about how is it possible to partner boundaries with forgiveness when you've experienced a betrayal or a violation? Correct, so boundaries are not barriers. They are not intended as necessarily to keep people at bay or to just put up walls in your relationships or in any other capacity in your life. Actually, boundaries are setting uh, those kinds of, of expectations, guidelines that give us a sense of who we are and enable our sense of well-being. Mm -hmm. So it's an so act of reason, love and self-respect, really. Exactly, exactly. Um, self-respect as well as um, safety, mm -hmm. uh, protection, as well as um, healthy relationships, relationships that help us increase in our capability to, to progress, to grow in confidence, um, and to develop talents and abilities. All of those things are enhanced by boundaries. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about boundaries, we can relate it to the, the benefit of, if you have a four-way stop and there's a, a light, mm -hmm. it, it uh, enables the capacity to for people who are driving to uh, move through safely and without incident. Whereas if the semaphore is not there, um, then it creates chaos. 
And so the lack of boundaries can create real chaos in our lives, whereas boundaries create a sense of order and a sense of, like I say, a develop an enlightening capacity um, that increases every capability, intellectual, physical, social, spiritual capacity that we're trying to develop. Interesting. It's going to be such a fascinating concept to experience and learn through that lens. It's very, very beautiful. And it's also a little bit unique and new. So I'm sure a lot of our audience members will be taking notes furiously. Um, but you asked also though about how that pairs with forgiveness. Yes, let's talk about that. Which is interesting because when you when we have a boundary, um, not only might we be betrayed by someone else, but we might betray our own intentions. Mm-hmm. And how do we get past that? How do we get past the betrayal? Well, that's where forgiveness comes in because we have to learn how to recognize that part of our human experience is that people are going to uh, do wrong. Yes. We always have choices between good and, and right and wrong. And if we choose, if someone chooses to do wrong, either ourselves or someone else, then there has to be a pathway out of that. Yes. And that pathway out of that is to learn how to repent or change and then to, to, so we can increase our capacity to move forward and progress and also to give others that opportunity to move forward and to progress. Now, if we have been betrayed, forgiveness allows us to release ourselves from those feelings of, um, that we carry with us, the burden that we carry with us of the, mm-hmm. the pain, the hurt, that can oftentimes be a huge stop block, a barricade, if you will, not a boundary, but a barricade to our progression. Mm-hmm. And so we want to be able to uh, release that emotion, get rid of that emotional barrier and open our own pathway. And as we find, as we forgive someone else, that it increases our own capacity as well as the capacity of the other person to also move forward. Now, when we say that we have to be, have one cautionary note forgiveness does not mean reintroducing the the in the relationship that was caused the betrayal or in any way is abuses our well-being that's not what we're talking about yeah, we don't put ourselves in the path of danger we right still, we don't we still we, act with the uh, intelligence and cautiousness correct mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. so we just so that's so the two the boundaries and the forgiveness go hand in hand. They're definitely, they're not only compatible, but they're integral to um, our capacity to feel a sense of fulfillment, the empowerment and the progression that we hope to achieve. Sure. You know what I really love about your subject and what you're going to be sharing with our audience is it is a universal experience. It is the human experience. And we will be so blessed to be able to learn from you, to be able to like take those words of wisdom and really figure out how they can bless our lives and support us in making progress, letting go some of the wounds and hopefully creating, you know, better circumstances and boundaries for ourselves in our own lives. So absolutely. Thank you. I hope, I hope so. I hope we can, can create that spirit and that assurance for those that are, are there. And I look forward to also learning from others. Thank it you. will be a wonderful day. Thank you for your time, Carol. It has been an absolute pleasure. And of course, it will be wonderful to see you again at the Find Your Voice Conference on May 7th. And people who want to know more can visit findyourvoiceconference.com where tickets are still available. And we have a beautiful panel of amazing and talented women to learn from. Thank you, Carol. It's wonderful to see you. Fabulous. Thank you. Take care. You too.